Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring Legacy of the Cage, the Gauntlet. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this dice powered mixed martial arts action fighting game, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about skills. Skills represent unique abilities that grant fighters beneficial effects or impose challenging conditions on an opponent. Some fighters choose skills that augment their powers. Others attempt to shore up weaknesses. Skills are an exciting way to customize your fighters. Fighters may learn new skills between fights. To learn a new skill, spend the required amount of advancement points and list the new skill on your fighter's profile sheet. There is no limit to the number of skills a fighter may learn. Once a skill is learned, it is known for the entire duration of your fighter's career. Some skills have prerequisites listed in their skill description. Your fighter must meet all the prerequisites in order to learn the skill. A fighter must train a learned skill to make use of it. You may train as many skills as you like, while the total of all trained skills required mind is equal to or less than your current mind score. Training a passive skill activates its effect immediately. Training an active or reactive skill allows you to use the skill during its appropriate activation time. To train a skill, simply note the skill and associated effects under the trained skills portion of your fighter profile sheet. You may only train skills between fights. You may not change or untrain skills during a fight. Untrain a skill by removing it from the trained skills section on your fighter profile sheet. There are various skill types. They are divided into three specifically. Active, reactive, and passive. Passive skills are always on. They afford persistent effects that remain in place while the skill remains trained. Active skills must be declared and used at specific points during a fight or after a fight. Active skills can be used up to the number of times listed in their description under number of uses. The number of uses is listed as number of uses per round or number of uses per fight. Only the active fighter may use active skills. Reactive skills must be declared and used in response to specific conditions or events. Like active skills, reactive skills can be used up to the number of times listed in their descriptions under number of uses. Only the reactive fighter may use reactive skills. Every skill has an activation time, in fight, between rounds and post fight. Skills whose activation time is listed as in fight may be used during a round but not on breaks between rounds. Most in fight skills should be used at specific trigger points during a segment. Skills with the between rounds activation time may be used only during a break between rounds. Skill activation timing is part of the violent chess match in Legacy of the Cage. The fighter who had priority in the round immediately preceding the break chooses which skills to activate first. He may activate as many between rounds skills as he chooses. He then passes the opportunity to his opponent who may also activate as many between rounds skills as he chooses. Post-fight skills must be used immediately following the conclusion of a fight. Most post-fight skills are used to modify or reduce the effects of the consequences of the result. When it comes to using skills, each fighter may use one active or reactive skill per segment. Passive skills do not count towards this limit. Most active and reactive skills have conditions that must be met before they can be used. To use a skill, announce which skill you intend to use. Take the associated actions, calculate the bonuses or penalties specified in its effect text, if any, and proceed with the fight as normal. Indicate you have used this skill on the score sheet and your fighter profile sheet. Every skill description has some standard information that makes it easy to reference how much a skill costs, how often it can be used, and what effects it will have on the fight or fighters. Some skills have prerequisites that must be met before a fighter can learn them. And of course, each listed skill on this rulebook has a name, a type, action point cost, required mind, activation time, number of uses, effect, and prerequisites. Let's talk about some of them. 
you have clinch. Immediately prior to making a check that uses your striking score, set your target by subtracting your opponent's striking score from your wrestling score. You also have crank. Immediately prior to making a check that uses your grappling score, add 5% to your critical target. There is also dodge. Immediately before you roll an evade check, add a plus one bonus to your check. You also have wrist control. Immediately before your opponent rolls a check using his wrestling score, he does so at a minus one penalty. There is also fortitude. Immediately reroll one failed major injury check. And there is also lung capacity. Reduce the durability damage suffered from gassing by one this segment. And these are just a few of the many skills. This concludes this part of the review. In the next part, we are going to talk about the modes of play, including, of course, the solo mode. I think that skills are handled quite realistically, despite the abstract nature of the rules. You have skills that, of course, you are going to be training in getting better at them, but you can also untrain skills because, in real life, if a fighter stops using a particular move or technique, you become rusty, you lose your edge when using that skill, so it represents that in my opinion. Now when it comes to choosing your skills, it's also part of the strategy. It's more strategic than anything else. You will be employing tactics, but determining the outcome of a fight and the progress of your fighter's career, not just based on tactics but also on strategy, is perfect to realistically represent the journey of a fighter. Thank you for watching this part of the review and thank you for your likes and your comments. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you and see you later.